Okay, welcome back. Now we do a related problem to the problem that I just did. We talked about the, interfe the interference pattern shift when we put a glass plate. Now we have a point source of light. We put it at the focal length of a converging lens and then the light goes and then because we know from optics when you put the light source at the focal point of a converging lens, then the image will be produced at infinity. So the the light waves will travel uh, horizontal. Then you have two tubes. Originally they were both air. Then the light beam went through them and then it formed the interference pattern here. So the question says, one of the tubes, the air was uh, vacuumed out and it was, instead of air they placed ammonia gas, right? So we already know the index of refraction of air is 1.000277. And uh, we're doing this as an experiment to find out what's the index of refraction of ammonia gas, right? So they vacuum out the air here, they put ammonia gas, then they find out that the whole pattern shifts upwards. So the whole pattern shifts upwards by 17 complete fringes, right? So in other words, previously what had been the 17th bright fringe down here goes to the middle, and then the central maximum goes 17 fringes up to the top, right? So that means the shift is towards the ammonia gas. Well, what does that mean? If they're the same length, that means the ammonia gas must have a larger index of refraction because uh, I argued that in the previous video. So index of refraction of this is greater than index of refraction of air, right? So let's use that equation for the shift amount. X equals shift amount. Okay, and then what was that equation? X is equal to, now in this case, they didn't actually tell us the distance to the screen and the distance between the slits. We don't even know that. But the only thing that's given is that the shift is a complete 17 fringe shift. So then what we can do is we can use the other equation that we have, d sine theta is equal to n lambda. Then we say d sine of theta is equal to, um, x divided by d is equal to n lambda. So this gives us the, uh, the x position for any n fringe, right? For bright fringes. So x is equal to uh, n d lambda over d, right? So what does it mean that the shift amount is 17 complete fringes? Well, that means for the x of the 17th fringe, n is equal to 17, right? So 17 d lambda over d, right? So that means the x here, the shift amount, is this is equal to that one. So it's equal to the 17th fringe. In other words, the 17th bright fringe here is coming from the bottom and is replacing the central fringe. And the central fringe is replacing the 17th fringe over there. So that means x equals 17 d lambda over d is equal to this x which is equal to the shift amount. So we say here 17 d lambda over d is equal to n air minus n gas. Now we can factor out the L, right? Times d over d. So what does that mean? That means the problem doesn't have to tell us the distance between the slits and the distance to the screen. This d and this d cancel. Big D and big D cancel. So therefore, we can solve for the N of the gas. What does the problem have to tell us? It has to tell us the wavelength of the light that was used. This information, the wavelength of the light. So depending on the wavelength of the light, the shift amount would have been different, right? That would have affected the shift amount. The wavelength that was used is equal to 589 nanometer. Okay, 589 nanometer. Okay, actually, I have to change the order of this because remember we argued that the end of the gas is going to be greater than the end of the air because the shift amount was towards the gas. So then I, I have to say here, end of gas minus end of air. So that's a little tricky point that you have to make sure you get the, depending on the shift amount, right? So end of gas L minus end of air L. So then I have to say, let's derive a general equation here, end of gas minus n of air, so n gas minus n air is equal to 17 lambda over L, right? n gas 
minus n air. So then I can put down what the index of refraction of air is, 1.000277, 17. And then they're giving us that the wavelength is 589 nanometer. So 589 times 10 to the minus 9. And then the length of the tubes are, is the same, so it's equal to 0.1 meter. So 10 centimeter is 0.1 meter. So let's calculate that now. We have here 17 times 589 times 10 to the power negative 9. Okay, divide that by 0.1. Add that to 1.000277. So you get 1.000277. Okay. And then you can keep doing this experiment. Keep this air, uh, take this out, put it with a different gas, carbon dioxide gas, nitrogen gas, oxygen gas, pure oxygen, nitrogen, anything else, helium, uh, hydrogen, and then you can perform this experiment. Keep, keep doing it. Find out what the shift amount is. Use the same wavelength of light that you originally used, and then you could use this as an experimental method to calculate the index of refraction of a lot of different gases, okay? Thank you very much.